Okay, um, what I'm going to talk about is a, a library of routines for the HP GCC compiler, which lets you write C code for the 49, G, uh, 49 plus and the 50G calculators. Uh, it can also be used on the 48G2, and contact me if you want to know how to do that. There are several funny things you have to do to make that work, um, but, but it is possible. Uh, the reason for doing this sort of thing is that uh, programs that uh, where am I? Uh, the programs that result are executing directly on the calculator's ARM processor instead of emulated on the Saturn processor. And if anybody doesn't know, the uh, the original 48 series was running on a, I guess it's a Hewlett Packard Saturn processor. Those are no longer made, so it's actually. <laughs> and ARM processor running, I think it's 75 megahertz, that is emulating every instruction <coughs> of the Saturn. Um, and that, that takes up a lot of performance by doing that. Um, these programs in, in C code are typically 100 times faster than user RPL. That's not an exaggeration. That's pretty much everything that I've written and, and everything I've heard of other people writing. You get a 100-fold speed up. Um, so the, the calculators are basically what we had on our desktops not too, too many years ago in terms of the actual performance that's available. Um, okay, now the, there's a problem there though, which is that the, all of the objects on your calculator, your real numbers and integers and lists and, and on and on and on, uh, those are all essentially stored in a format that the Saturn processor recognizes, but the C environment doesn't recognize them at all. So you need a way to be able to transfer things back and forth between the two of them. And that's what the HP Objects Library is for. It's to, it's to let you uh, read and write the Saturn objects directly. So you can read things off the stack or out of variables and create them back on the stack, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, I went too far there, sorry. Okay, some of the features, it supports all 31 of the object types in a single, consistent, programmer-friendly library. Um, what I found in looking at the code that's already available is uh, it, it seemed inconsistent to me. Uh, most of it only supported some of the objects, usually with all kinds of restrictions. Um, you know, you could create a list, but you could only create a list of, of numbers or a list of reals and integers, uh, stuff like that. Um, other things, the full source code is included with this, so you can look at it, recompile it, do whatever you want. It has proper handling, I think, for direct and indirect pointers and things like lists and secondaries, programs, that kind of thing. Um, this is getting a little esoteric, but uh, if you create a list and you put in uh, the numbers, the real numbers 1, 2, and 4.7, the, what's actually stored in that list is a pointer to a, a copy of the number one in ROM, a pointer to a copy of the number two in ROM, and then an actual number that's whatever the other one is, I said, uh, 2.37. So they can contain combinations of pointers to objects and actual objects embedded within the lists. Most of the other code that I saw didn't really handle that aspect properly, and this library does, I think, very well. Maybe if I talk to Tim, I'll, I'll be able to verify if I'm doing this right or not. Um, let's see. Right, other advantages. Uh, the names are very consistent. The parameters are very consistent across all of the object types. Uh, you'll see that in a little bit. <laughs> Essentially, what that means is that it's very easy to use. The kinds of things that you do with one object are very similar to the kinds of things you do with another, the ways that you do them, et cetera, et cetera. Um, I created a, a type def, which is um, basically a synonym for, for a, a Saturn address, um, so that you can clearly distinguish between whether you're talking about something in the Saturn memory or something in the, the C land memory, the, the, the memory of the C program. Uh, otherwise, which is really confusing, at least for me. And also a clear distinction between nibbles and bytes, nibbles being, a nibble being a four bit quantity that is the essentially the unit uh, of data within the Saturn processor. Again, what I found is that most of the existing software, at least for me, it was very confusing when they talked about the size of something. Did they mean how many bytes it was, how many nibbles it was? Um, so I tried to make that very clear. The object types that it handles, and these are all from the, the names, 
from a uh, from the document on I think it's called uh, Intro to Saturn Assembly Language Programming. Um, but essentially, it's all of them. pointers, arrays, backups, binary integers, character complex, code, directories, on and on and on. Okay, so let me let me show you an example of how you use this. This is all C code, um, so hopefully some of you will understand this. Uh, at line four, you have to declare, you have to include the standard HPGCC library. That's basically something you have to, the header file, you have to include that pretty much for any program that you're writing on the calculator. The next line is the include file for the HP objects library. You'll need that if you're going to be using the library. Then in the main program on line number nine there, um, I'm declaring the uh, two variables for the addresses of objects that are in the Saturn memory. So these are objects that, that, are, that are in the emulated Saturn space called old num and new num. Oh, and I should say what this program is going to do is very simple. It will pop a, a real number off the stack, add one, and push the result back on. Just real simple stuff. All right, so at line 11, I'm saying if the stack depth is not zero, and uh, talk about the naming convention in a little bit. So if there's something on the stack, then at line 12, I'm going to pop that off. So I pop that off into, and I, and I get the address of whatever was on the stack into old num. So my old num variable now points to whatever's on the stack. If that's a real number, at line 13, then I'm going to create a double, a C language double, which is the, the uh, C language floating point number that you that, that C programs access normally. Uh, then I'm going to at line 15, I'm going to decode from the old number into that double. So I'm going to take the the uh, Saturn number, decode it into the binary number that the C language is going to understand. Add one to it at 16, and at line 17, I'm going to encode a real number. So I'm going to take a C binary number and turn it back into a Saturn number. Now, the question there is where are you going to put it? The second argument to the encode is the address where you want to put that real number. And if you pass it zero, it means created in the, the temp OB area, which is essentially where it stores temporary numbers. Create a new one there and store it there. If I had put an actual address in there, it would have dumped it into that address. Um, notice that the, the encode and decode functions, very similar. One of them, you uh, to, to decode, you give it the Saturn address and a pointer to the C variable. To encode, you give it the pointer, the, the C variable, and then the Saturn address. Data always moves from left to right in this line. Okay, um, the else is there in case uh, in case what you popped off the stack at line 13 was not a real number, then I'm just going to push it right back on. So if, if something else is on the stack, it'll leave the stack unchanged. And finally at line 22, I'm going to push the new number back on. And the reason it's a little, uh, the, the, the order of the logic there is a little bit funny because you'll see in the, the next example. Are there any questions so far? Okay, yes. So, you write You write you write the C code on the PC yeah. and and compile it there, and then you transfer it onto the calculator. <coughs> I mean, is, is there like like calculator in, in your C code? Yeah. Oh uh, no, that's actually one of the disadvantages of the C code is you cannot call calculator code from within the C code. So, so you're writing C? Yes. Uh, for right, and then, and then if, if, there's, if there's more that you want to do, then you need basically a calculator code that will do whatever, call the C code, and then come back out. Yeah. Okay, and then the return down there at line 24 is, is just typical uh, returning from a, from a program. Uh, the rest of this is essentially what I've just explained. Okay, so some conventions that I used within the library, the Saturn address, the set adder, typedef, always represents a Saturn address, and I use that throughout the whole thing. 
again, mostly because that way I can look at it and tell, oh, this is a Saturn address as opposed to a, just some sort of number. Um, there are lots of common functions, functions that use very common names. For example, is real means is this a real number? Is list means is it a list? Is dir means is it a dir? There are 31 objects that are supported. There are 31 functions that begin with is and then the, the name of the thing. Um, and then I've list, uh, listed sort of what some of those are. Is type, where type is one of those 31, tells you is it that type. You can decode an object with a, a decode method. And uh, depending on the exact type, there are a bunch of arguments. And then the last argument is always the address where you want to put it. Zero always means create the, uh, the memory for it in tempo B. Um, encode works exactly the other way around. The, the make functions are there, but I wouldn't use them um, if, if I were you. The problem is uh, typically you need to know exactly how much space you're going to need. And I won't get into it, but, but I would avoid those. You use the encode functions instead. Uh, the nibbles thing, you pass it a, uh, a, fun, a, a object of whatever the type is, and it tells you how big it is in nibbles. So again, the point there is to try to make this very easy to use, very regular. OK, so here's the second example. Same sort of idea as the first one, but now it's taking an integer instead of a real number. And the, the thing that you should notice of this is that the code is almost identical. The only things that have changed are the functions that used to have the word real in them now have z in them. Uh, z in just being the name for an infinite precision integer. So you could take that and, and uh, use similar stuff for most of the others. OK, and then the last example here is working with lists. So this is a little bit more complicated. This one is um, going to take a, uh, a list of reals or integers, and they can be mixed and matched, however. And it's going to increment each one of them and create a new list that contains the incremented values. So a little bit more complicated. Um, I'm going to start off with a couple functions, increment real uh, on line 7. And this just contains the code that we had earlier for incrementing a real number. So it takes as an address, it takes as an argument the address of a real number. It increments it, uh, creates the new one, and returns the address of the new one. And then at line 15 is the same sort of thing for the integer. Again, grab it, decode it, create, increment the value, and push the, the new one back on. And then we'll get to the, the meat of handling the list down here. So again, we have old list and new list. At line 27, if there's a stacked up, we're going to pop the list off, check to make sure it is a list on line 29. Then we start getting into some of the guts. Um, at line 30, I'm going to declare a couple things. Uh, list ob is the object that is in the input list. So I'm going to use that. That's going to point to each object in the input list as I go along. New ob is going to be the replacement object, the, the object plus one from the list. Iter is an iterator. Um, used simply to walk through the list. So you basically will need that in a way that you'll see in a little bit to go through objects within the list. And then at line 31, I'm declaring a C array of Saturn objects, uh, of uh, uh, pointers to Saturn objects. The size of that array it needs to hold however many items there are in the list. So to get that number, I can call this size uh, there towards the end of line 31. So what this is going to contain is individual pointers to the replacement <coughs> objects. I'm going to need that in order to create the list that's going to be created at the very end. 